is what originally drew you to want to play this character and want to be part of this film? Um, well, I got sent the script and um, I didn't know who was attached or anything and I had never worked with or met Evan before and I read the script and I mean I was like shocked and disgusted and freaked out and I just I like put the script down and I was like oh my god like I just there was I was just kind of unnerved um and it, I like that though mm -hmm. you know what I mean it like really made me think about things and <laughs> feel things I had to think um and the character Violet is so fucked up like and normally when I read a script and I like see the character I'm I'm like, oh, I, I know that. Like, I, I know that person, or there's a small part of that person in me, and I can just, like, bring it out. But with this, I was like, I don't have a sliver of this bitch, like, in me. Like, she is a psychopath, and she just has, like, no remorse. So I was afraid. Um, but that made me want to do it. And then Pat Healy, who's my really good friend, and we did another movie together called The Innkeepers um, a couple of years ago, he called me, and he was like, I'm playing Craig, you know, I want to work with you again, I think this would be really fun, and so that gave me the, the final courage to be like, okay, I'll do it. I was most interested with Violet in the fact that throughout 99% of the movie, she has zero emotions. Yeah, I mean, she's, she's like just, not impressed. It is it, with anything. She's just stale, going along for the ride. How hard is that for you as an actress to be able to bring forth a character that's so dry? Well, that was another thing that I was worried about when I read the script. I was like, not only is she horrible, but um, I don't say a lot. Also because Pat and Ethan and David are so good and so amazing to watch that it's really hard not to be like, you know, and they're like, you're bored, it's not interesting. And I'm like, oh yeah. And then Evan, the director was like, you should use your real phone and like just be texting. And I was like, okay, get more friends. I was like, not that popular. I'm like, all right, hey mom, like how's work? I'm just filming, trying to act like I have someone to talk to. Um, so there was that. Very small, intimate cast mm -hmm. involved here. How was it going to work each day knowing that you were only going to be with these same three characters and keeping that energy up without bringing anybody new or removing anybody mm -hmm. from the process? Well, it was kind of a, I mean, it was a fun shoot because I, those guys are great. Um, but it was also kind of a tense shoot because we had, we made the movie in like 15 days. Um, in like the blazing summer in Los Angeles in a tiny house with no air conditioning and we're doing this stuff where like the tensions are mm -hmm. rising you know and so everyone's like sweating and pissed off I like that it was an intimate cast because we were doing some race there were some racy bits you know there was like some some sexy stuff and then some um, you know really tense stuff and I definitely think that it's Nice. We had like a small, cohesive cast to work off each other, and I, I've known Pat for years, and I feel totally comfortable with him. And, um, so I think that it definitely helps. How close is the final cut of the film to the original script that you read? Was there a lot of change made throughout the process, or is it pretty straightforward? Um, I think it's pretty straightforward. Um, I saw the movie for the first time at South By last year. And I was really, really happy with it. I mean, I I didn't really know what to expect. You don't know what to expect when you, you, know, you do something and then you go see it. And um, yeah, I don't think there were a lot of changes. I think that it's weird. Like I think that every single person really brought it to life. Like it was exactly what I wanted it to be. Movies like this often have a really fun jokester on set. You mentioned some of the comedic uh, parts of the cast. Who was the one that was always being victimized? What kind of environment was that? I don't know if they were like pranks per se, but David is just so funny. It was never ending. We'd be like about, they'd be like rolling and he'd still be like firing away like some joke in my ears. We're about to like go in there and like <laughs> do a scene that's like really dark and they call action and I'm like, I'm having to not, <laughs> not laugh. Um, so there was always that. And the three guys were like kids together. It was like they were just constantly joking and goofing off and 
they were having a great time. And I was like the only girl. I'm like the girl in the corner. I'm like, that's funny. All right, calm down. Like, no more poop jokes, guys. Like, let's keep it together. Um, yeah, so not, no pranks per se, but they were, it was constant. It was like, they were having the best time. 